All right, what's going on there, folks? Good Saturday night. It is the Earthmaster here on this uh, September 23rd, 2023 date, about 10.36 p.m. here, California time. Uh, latest activity looks like a 3.1 over here around the Java Trench. We did see some activity working its way off the coast of the Sumatra region, including a 5.3 earlier uh, this evening. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the West Coast activity first. Got a little earthquake up here just outside of Eureka, 2.1, 19 kilometers deep here uh, underneath the area into the Cascadia subduction zone. Check out the trimmer map here tonight and see what we have right off the bat. As we look at uh, the map, only 11 epicenters, and it is mostly here in the Northern California, if you, if you think about it. Uh, definitely uh, seeing... Uh, potentially a little bit of strain upstream around the uh, 19 to 20 kilometer range. This activity here, the trimmer, occurs roughly 35 to 45 kilometers down into the subduction zone. So looks like a little bit of strain building up specifically here across the Northern California area uh, with this 2.1 in the last hour. Uh, also a little bit of activity here just outside of Willows, 2.9, 4.8 kilometers deep. Uh, we do occasionally see some earthquake activity out here. I don't know if it's associated with the Sacramento River or not, which runs up here, of course, uh, north and south. But, uh, you know, it's been um, kind of been hit and miss out here with earthquake activity. I'm not for sure about what's going on out here. Um, let me check out the satellite view here and see what we got. There's massive uh, rice fields out here and orchards galore. Uh, they have been pumping out quite a bit of uh and these checkered squares they are not oil pumping operations as far as i know um i've been out here numerous times but uh, there's a lot of farmland out here uh but the uh, pumping of the groundwater could have a, a little part in what's going on with earthquake activity so continue to watch that region uh the cob mountain area of northern california of course the calpine hydrothermal operations in full swing out there it looks like today as uh, far as the Bay Area, get a little separate swarming out here. Just outside of the Monte Vista region, latest of 1.8. We did see a 2.7 earlier, uh, which is uh, much further outside this area to the east. But uh, got a little separate swarming occurring here within this region. Uh, let's see what else we got. Anything major going on? Southern Cal, pretty quiet for now. That's not always going to be the case, though. So Los Angeles. A couple smaller quakes out here near uh, Willowbrook, 1.3 to 1.2. Deeper quakes here underneath this region, about 11 to 23 kilometers deep. So things uh, stirring up down below the surface. Into the Pacific Northwest, a little activity outside of Seattle. Um, we got a 2.0, 22 kilometers deep, and a couple other smaller quakes within the region. Yellowstone National Park, doesn't look like too much activity stirring up here, but... As always, we have to double check, just in case. Uh, really not seeing anything major going on out here across the area as far as earthquake activity goes, for now. Uh, the rest of the country here, a little scattered activity throughout Oklahoma, Texas, and Colorado. Puerto Rico getting in on a handful of smaller quakes out here as well. A couple twos and threes out here across the Puerto Rico Trench. Uh, South America, a handful of earthquakes including a 4.5, but we have to go to the Earthquake 3D globe to kind of see some of those smaller quakes. Now, we do have a 4.1 over here on the globe, which is, uh, this looks like a newer earthquake over here against the Barbuda region, it looks like. Uh, and Barbados area. Dominica region. This is a major subduction zone here, a 4.0 coming in. At least according to the EMSC model, or 4.1, I should say. Uh, so some slight uptick in activity occurring uh, occurring within that region. Uh, let's see, where has the cluster been today? It looks like mainly across this area of the Java Trench and into um, portions of the Indonesia Islands area around the Banda Sea. Not a whole lot of activity showing up here on this map, but as we can see on the globe, Things stirring up there quite nicely across that region. And across the Himalayas, that's another area that's somewhat overdue in terms of larger scale movement. Um, 
major subduction zone, obviously. It's been building up some strain for quite a while. Nepal, talking about, uh, you know, areas of northern India. This area definitely capable of producing some large-scale earthquakes. It's been somewhat quiet. Uh, but a 4.1 occurring here on this plate boundary. Looks like uh, some movement here in the uh, Mediterranean area, including a 4.1. That earthquake, I believe, is going to be associated up here across the uh, uh, Georgia region, it looks like, outside of Turkey. 10 kilometers deep, coming in within the last couple hours. A little bit of movement across Turkey and the uh, oh, off Bosnia coast, Albania region. Looks like a little activity stirring up here across the last 24 hours. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. Nothing major going on here for now. One little earthquake out here right smack dab in the rift zone of Africa. Let's see if uh, USGS not picking up on that. Goodness. Uh, but still, definitely some activity. It looks like stirring up down there in the uh, Africa region. The uh, Japan Trench and the Kuro Kamachaka up here, for the most part, uh, is quiet. There's a couple of earthquakes occurring just off the coast here of Tokyo. Got a 4.4 occurring, 51 kilometers deep into this major subduction zone. This is, uh, I think we all know this is a major hazardous area. 2011 kind of showed us that. And there's been, you know, previous earthquake activity throughout history here that uh, shows some large-scale movement. The Kuro Kamachaka Trench is one of those as well. But this one here has been awfully quiet. Uh, I don't know how much longer it's going to stay quiet, though. The Big Island of Hawaii, mostly smaller microquakes out here. No changes there across the volcano, as far as I know. Uh, the space weather activity just coming back here from an eclipse. Of course, the moon, I believe this is the moon here, getting in the way of this, uh, this spacecraft out there monitoring the uh, data SDO website. It happens every time around this, uh, well, around this time of day, 24 hours or so. That would make sense, right? We are looking at uh, some flaring going on prior to that, including uh, what looks like a, a uh, M flare, long duration M flare, M4.4 to be exact. Uh, far as the source, it looks like that is coming off of a sunspot that uh, we have been chatting about for a little, well, for a couple days. That's going to be 3445. This is a little bit older image from this morning, but it still looks pretty complex. Let's look at the recent data. That is what you call a pepper of a sunspot. I have not seen something like this in quite a long time with this many cores dynamically set up within this region. So this may be turning into something fairly drastic in terms of producing a major flare. And it is in position here. Uh, where, you know, it's, it will be Earth-directed, Earth-directed component. That's uh, quite dynamic. Again, I haven't, I haven't really seen anything like that in quite some time. 3445 is the source of this recent M flare. And as you can see here on this graph, that is the uh, M4.4 that kicked off. I think, it's, uh, I think it's ready to maybe produce the next flare. We'll keep an eye on that. Overall threat, 99% chance for a C flare. M flare at 60 X flare, a fifteen percent chance, uh, but it's looking it's looking likely. Keep an eye on it, folks. There it is again here on the UV filter ray. Uh, super dynamic, super large, and uh, it just wants to blow off an X flare in our direction. As far as that G one class storm, I I don't know. Sometimes these just don't work out. Doesn't look like we're seeing any G one class storming out here. Uh, was forecasted here last night and tonight. May be arriving late, may have missed us completely. Uh, but either way, we'll keep an eye on 3445 as that may uh, provide us with some enhancements in the uh, days ahead. Uh, National Hurricane Center here, as far as the uh, post tropical system here, tropical cyclone Ophelia, post, that means afterwards, she's done. Uh, did see quite a bit of rainfall peeking out there from that uh, tropical system. Things have 
drastically drop down with uh, no watches or warnings up on here for now. Uh, and that's just, that's, uh, that's it. Didn't really have much time to enhance, uh, but that's what happens when these tropical systems go over the, uh, the landfall, over land. All right, California. Now let's go, I want to check out the regions here of We can go to the North Pacific out here. This gives us a good indicator of some dynamic weather potential out here. We got some major deep troughing going on out here in the Gulf of Alaska. That will be bringing us some rainfall, including my area, um, mostly on Monday. I wish this was positioned a little bit further south. It is bringing with it quite a bit of rainfall along the coast range. Look at that. That thing is just spinning drastically out here. If it was positioned a little bit further south, I would be dancing out in the rain. But uh, either way, I think we'll get some sprinkles, uh, maybe a, a couple hundredths of an inch of rain or so um, from that system. But things, things look to be getting very active out here across the eastern Pacific. Um, it's a little early for our rain season to start. Uh, but with El Nino kicking up and much warmer conditions out here in the uh, eastern Pacific than normal, uh, we could be seeing quite the winter out here. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to seeing what happens with this El Nino that's coming up. Uh, although, like I say, these low pressures are off the coast a little bit further than I want. Uh, let's bring in the regions here of the northwest, Pacific Northwest here. Of course... These guys are going to get quite the soaking with the rainfall coming up Sunday night and the Monday. Down here in the Sacramento Valley, it looks like it things are drying out a little bit. We were forecasting maybe two-tenths of an inch of rain here around the Chico area, but that's backed off quite a bit due to the uh, location of that low-pressure system just further away from the area. Um, looking at the uh, precipitation um, far as the total accumulated precipitation map out here, this will give us a good indicator of what's going on far as, uh, you know, that, that precipitation total. And as you can see, it doesn't it really hardly ever even goes down in the Sacramento Valley, but up North Pacific Northwest, Oregon, you guys are going to get quite the soaking. I know you guys need it, but Hey, sharing is caring, right? And down here in Sacramento Valley, Around Chico, uh, it's pretty much high and dry. But either way, we're expecting some cooler temperatures out here. And uh, I've been loving these nights. We've been dipping down to about 49 degrees each night. And I love it. Absolutely love it. Have the windows open, the fans on. Couldn't ask for a more relaxing evening. Uh, currently 60 degrees outside right now. And uh, again, we're expected to drop into the uh, upper 40s. Now, far as uh, far as temperatures go out here, okay. Now, most of the time when we're looking at troughing out across the west coast, there it is, the cooler weather coming in. We see ridging going on out here, and you can see it obviously some well above temperatures in the Canada. I I don't know what's going on up there, but those guys are cooking. And uh, potentially here in the northern plains on next week of Thursday, things are going to get cooking as well. Weather pattern change looks to be potentially maybe um, towards the 2nd of October. Looks like some of that cooler weather is coming down. Uh, and this could spell some trouble for some severe weather. You got that colder, drier air mixing with the warm, moist air. The moist air uh, and that will definitely spell some trouble out there in terms of severe weather. But... Uh, it's an interesting pattern, definitely an interesting pattern that's going on right now as far as the, uh, the earliness. Uh, it's kind of the earliness of, uh, of these, these low pressures forming out here in the eastern Pacific. And a lot has to do with these warmer water temperatures. Look at the uh, difference from average here. Pretty quite warm out here across the eastern Pacific. There's a little cool cool pull out here uh off the hawaii coast you can see that little bluer water but uh it's um it is still quite warm in the eastern pacific so again i'm kind of curious to see what's going to go on here this winter um 
Let's see, sea temperature. Yeah, that wasn't what I was after, but uh, either way, we'll watch this, right? It's going it's to be quite the interesting uh, setup here this winter as far as El Nino goes. And of course, for the most part, El Nino, strong El Ninos normally, typically bring a wet weather pattern here throughout the wintertime in California. We already had one of our wettest winters last year due to a triple dip La Nina which is pretty crazy because La Nina normally means drier conditions, but it was a triple dip, kind of rare, three years in a row of a uh, strong La Nina. But now we're looking at a uh, strong El Nino pattern setting in. So it will be interesting to see how these weather patterns play out. Either way, it shouldn't be boring this winter out here along the West Coast. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Um, I don't think we see anything major going on as far as volcanic hazards go. At least in the USGS recorded and monitoring stations, all clear across the West Coast. The Atlantic or the uh, um, Aleutian Trench, obviously, you know, these volcanoes do kick up on occasion across that area, but nothing in the red right now. And Kilauea Volcano and Mauna Loa and the rest of the volcanoes out there, pretty quiet. Catch you guys back here a little bit later tomorrow, folks. Enjoy your Saturday night. Please stay safe out there. Definitely sounds, at least in my area, sounds like there's a quite a bit of crazy people out here tonight have a good one stay safe out there and uh, enjoy your saturday night peace out